Hey everyone, um, I decided to do one more quick tutorial to go over the stuff we discussed in the previous video, but this time I'm going to use a Java, a blackjack game written in Java, um, because it will follow more of what you guys did in assignment one, and I'm going to show you guys simply how to make a front end aspect of that, uh, of, um, a blackjack game written in Java. So I'll guide you through creating this blackjack game with Java in the back end, which won't be that important, but most importantly, we're going to see how we can leverage uh, um, uh, other tools in order to have the JavaScript front end, then using Selenium to test the game. So here's going to be a step-by-step -step overview of what we'll cover. So we'll be setting up the back end with Java uh, Spring Boot. There's other ways to do this, but this is just something that came to mind of how I can set this up. Um, this is totally up to you when it comes to the future of the course. If you guys want to use it or not, it's whatever you guys decide. Then the next thing will be to develop the front end with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then the last thing would be testing the game using Selenium, just like we did in our previous videos. Okay. Let's get into it. So I already have my blackjack game set up and I have it split up into my uh, back end and my front end. Um, let's see my shirt. Okay, perfect. So uh, in order to start off, um, the way I kind of set up my uh, project, I, I used Maven. I'm sure you guys used that too for you guys' previous uh, assignments. I use this particular command in order to set up my blackjack backend and my um, uh, my front end. Um, so one thing I'll show you after running this command, I'm not going to run it because I've already have everything kind of set up at this point. Um, when you have your Maven project, uh, sorry, let me just remove this. <clears throat> okay, that was slower than I thought. All right, uh, you can, sorry, yeah, when you have your Maven project set up, uh, like so, um, I already did the implementation of the code for the Blackjack game itself. Um, then it's very important to also uh, include the dependencies for Spring, Spring Boot in the palm.xml file. <clears throat> so if we open up that palm.xml file, if we go down to um, right here, uh, you can kind of see uh, how this is the parent for uh, Spring Boot, and then we should also have the dependencies as well right here. This is very important because this is what your program is going to rely on in order to run it on the back end itself. Another thing I added that might be needed for you guys as well is I also included a blackjack controller and um, uh, pretty much, well, not only did I have that, but I also have card.java, deck.java, and player.java, um, and black controller.java. But one of the most important parts about this controller is it's the rest controller handling the game request itself. So it has the endpoint for starting a game, um, which is the slash start, and then hitting, uh, which is a slash hit, and then standing, which is a slash stand. Um, so we can kind of go look over. This is some of the functionality for it right here. And these are uh, what will be used in the back end part of the game. And then, um, very simply, if I want to, after I have my, uh, uh, I installed all my dependencies, so you can do that by running Maven clean install, as in so. Perfect. Now you have all your defense dependencies ready. You can run the following command on the back end. And this is pretty much starts the back end uh, aspect of the game so that the front end itself um, is able to grab in this information and display what is needed. So we'll do the following command like so. 
All right, perfect. And that should start the back end aspects of things. <clears throat> now we can start getting into some of the front end stuff. So um, as you can see, here's the front end aspect. It's very similar to like how my previous videos were where I had the index HTML, my styling, and then my script.js. The only difference is in this case, well, I'm making my testing in JavaScript, but it's a very similar format to how it was done before using Python. So I'll give you guys a little bit of context of how it looks. This is just a very simple index.html. This is our main pa game page. It includes buttons to start the game, hit and stand. And this is just the generic basic structure. And then we also have our script.js right here. <clears throat> Uh, in script.js, we add the JavaScript uh, function that call the backend endpoints. So it uses this uh, API base URL here to start it and fetch uh, the information needed. For example, when it comes to the hit, stand, um, you can add many other functions if you guys like as well. Um, this is just something very simple in order for you guys to get a generic idea of how you can approach this later on throughout the course. Um, and then lastly, which is not crazy important, but I just did some simple styling in order to make it more appealing to you guys, um, which is great. Um, and then one thing we can do in order to start the uh, front end aspect of stuff is we can use the following command. It's called npx uh, server. So we can start it like so. It is very important to have your back end running because a lot of the front end actually grabs the information from the back end itself. So uh, it will show us the where this um, this server is available on. So cl command click, and here's my simple game. We can click start game, uh, game started. My score is 19, I'm gonna stand. Uh, dealer score is 19, it's a tie. Let's start another game. Oh, I have a perfect score, I'm gonna stand. Okay, well, that's unlucky, but let's start again. Hit, let's just stand, dealer wins, and it's very similar to how the other game worked as well. So I'm going to close that. Um, so that's kind of how you get your um, front end aspect working. And uh, I, if you guys, I will upload my code to GitHub. If you look at my, uh, HT, uh, my HTML, my uh, JavaScript code, there's no actual functional uh, functionality implementation for this game. It's fetching all its functionality through the back end with the Java project I created. So that's very uh, important. Now we can go into the testing aspects of stuff. So it's important to have uh, your Selenium web driver installed, which we did, I believe, in a future video or uh, previous video. But I'll just uh, remind you guys with the command. This is the following command in order to install that. This is very important when it comes for uh, using Selenium test. I'm not going to run that because I've already done it. Um, and then we have our test.js. So this is kind of my example of uh, one sh uh, kind of a one shot run. This was very similar to how it was done in the previous video with Python, but now it's being done with uh, JavaScript instead. So this is, um, for example, this will be how to see like if it starts the game properly, this will be the game status. This will be the functionality to test the hit button. Um, this is for the stand button, this functionality, and then um, to see kind of the final status of this as well. So this is a very important aspect of uh, uh, testing the game. And then it's pretty simple. If I want to just see how it works and run my test case, I can just write no test.js like so. And then it kind of does its thing. And then just like we did in our Python, um, and then it gives me the results. So uh, after hit one, uh, score 20. After hit two, I ended up busting, player busts. And then final game status, um, player wins. Okay, that should not say player wins, but that is besides the, the point. Um, we're just trying to see how to use Selenium to test stuff. 
Um, there probably was some backend Java logic that I may have messed up on, but that's totally fine. And then as you can see, test pass, final game results is displayed correctly. So as you can see right here, uh, I pretty much did everything I did in all the previous videos. I just kind of condensed it down into one. Um, but this time I ended up using Java as a backend and then I used uh, kind of a web-based um, front end in order to display what's going on in the back end. And then I used JavaScript for testing with Selenium. This, uh, this was kind of a more condensed video because it's a lot of reuse and repetition, but this time we'll be um, just doing it with different languages. Um, I'll also be uploading the code to GitHub. So if you guys ever want to look at this code for reference, feel free to download it, run it yourself and see how things are done. Um, but that's kind of all for this last video and I hope this helps. And once again, don't be scared to reach out to me or the discord if you guys have any other questions. Thank you so much, guys. Bye bye.